before we get into this video, I just wanted to let you know my latest print, as fast as you can, is up on the website at mattirwin.com. It's a beautiful print. You should grab yourself a copy. We send them all around the world, wrapped in a tube. It's not very expensive at all. All right, let's get into the video. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. Today we are here in the City Gallery. It's a beautiful autumn or fall day as they call it in North America. And the sun, as we can see in the background, is shining into our little city alleyway. Today I want to talk about Nikon. And there is concern out there in some quarters that Nikon is sleeping. And I have to agree with Tom Hogan that I don't think that they are sleeping. I don't think that's what's happening at all. Nikon are going through some major change, major structural, financial, and geographical change in order to restructure their business to survive in the ever shrinking market. Now, recently on the new camera website, it was shown that Nikon still holds 18 and a half odd percent of the total camera market. Only about one or so percent behind Sony and of course, Canon lead with something like 45% of the market with Panasonic and Fuji having something in the 4%. So Nikon still hold almost 20% of the market. That's a significant share. That's a significant share of what we think might be anywhere between say four and 10 million cameras sold every year. That's still a lot of maths, and we'll, we'll work out the maths of that in another episode. But I don't think Nikon are sleeping. They are adjusting to this new market. They're adjusting to their place in the market, which is third largest, and as I said, holding almost 20% of the market, rather close to the percentage that Sony holds. So what are they doing? Well, they've, they've made it very clear to us that they're moving their entire manufacturing operations, besides a few bits and pieces, from Japan to Thailand. Now that is a massive change. And another big problem with all of that is it's having to happen during COVID. And COVID is still raging on in various parts of the world. Here in Australia, we happen to be particularly lucky and we're relatively free at the moment with a few minor outbreaks happening here and there that are very quickly contained. But in many other parts of the world, things are still very, very massive on the COVID front. So this is a huge thing, and they're making major geographical changes with COVID-19 being the backdrop to all of this. So what are they doing? They're rebuilding factories, they're retooling, they're resetting up for the 2021 releases. They're working extraordinarily hard on the Z9. We have had a APS-C camera registered, so we expect that to be coming next and coming soon. These are all things that Nikon are working on. Now, I have read that Nikon are working harder on the Z9 than they were before because they're trying to beat Canon to market. Now, I just want to say something here about the Z9. If Nikon did manage to get the Z9 to market before the R3, then this would be an absolutely massive thing. Now, I can hear people out there saying, yeah, but what about the A1? But here's the thing, and this is no disrespect to the A1. The A1 is clearly a technological monster. It is absolutely astonishing. But Sony made the choice not to put that technological monster inside a pro style body, inside a body which can take a larger battery and inside a body that has a vertical grip built into it. Now that's fine, that's a choice and many people out there would be happy with that choice, whatever system they're in. And I'm perhaps one of those people who would like the choice between having a vertical grip or not. So that's fine, but if the Z9 is out before the R3, this will actually give Nikon the mantle of having the first ever fully pro vertical grip incorporated mirrorless camera to market. They will be the first to do it. 35 mil. We do know that Olympus did bring a, a very interesting looking camera out a couple of years ago. Yes, it's true, but it wasn't 35 mil, it's not full frame, and it's not playing in the 35 mil space that Sony, Nikon, and Canon play in. Obviously, Olympus have a very small market share. 
So Nikon will deliver a first, the first full pro vertical grip incorporated, allowing for a larger battery, probably better heat dissipation, and all the other advantages that come with a fully pro body, built like a tank, you could drive a tank over them. Nikon could well be the first company that brings a 35 mil version of that to market. So it makes sense that they're working really, really hard on that. I agree. But when I have read that notion that resources are going away from other areas to the Z9, I kind of thought to myself, well, I think you've probably got engineers that are lens engineers and they don't have anything to do with cameras and, they, and, and it's just simply not what they do. And you'd have production lines that are built for polishing glass and putting lenses together that d can't put cameras together. So I kind of thought to myself, yes, sure, Nikon might be putting some more resources towards the Z9, but they would not be putting all of their resources towards the Z9. So I think they're probably still working on other stuff and we really do know that if the Z9 comes out, we do need some telephoto lenses, whether they're zooms or primes, I think we'll get a mix of both. That is critical. But just, I wanna throw in here, the F to Z adapter, it just works so super well. And the ability to be able to use current F lenses with the Z system is actually really, really good. So yes, I think the Z9 is coming as fast as it can. I still think that'll probably, we'll have prototypes out for the Olympics and hopefully Nikon starts to show us something and we start to see them. And when actual units arrive in your and my hands, well, I think that's kind of anywhere between September and October, November. That's kind of where I think it'll land. And it needs to. There's a lot of people excited out there. But can I, can I just jump in here in regards to people who are excited? Is the camera that you've got letting you down I mean, how much of this is just gas that people are kind of getting annoyed and upset? The D850 still has not reached the end of its four year cycle. It hasn't done it yet. And there's so many people out there with D850s. Is that camera letting you down? I think for probably the reason that you bought it for, it's probably not. So if you like Nikon, if you like what Nikon do, why wouldn't you wait for the Z9? It's an astonishing camera. I would love to buy myself one. At, at 45 or 50 megapixels, it's got enough for me. I, I, I would think that was amazing. I just kind of don't need blistering fast frame rates. That's the only reason I wouldn't purchase it. I don't need 20 frames a second. I am very happy with like somewhere between five and 10. I really am, I genuinely don't. And the only other reason I'd buy it is for the 8K. Look, the Z8 will probably have that. So I just have to hold my horses. But the thing that I don't like about what the Z8 might offer is it might offer 60, 70, 80 megapixels. And I don't want that either. So I wonder if there'll ever be a stripped down version of the Z9. And really, here, here, here you go. That's the Z7 II. It's right here, right now. And it gives everything that I want. And that's why I'm really happy where I am right now. So, unless you kind of do bird, birds in flight or animals running really quickly or sports with people going like super fast, the Z, Z cameras as they are today work really, really well. Like they really do. There is a lot of negative Nikon sentiment out there in the world that I think kind of overstates the negativities of the Nikons. But with the latest firmware update for the Z62 and the Z72, these cameras just continue to get better and better and they do the job really well. I just wanna quickly talk about the fact that last week for three days, I was doing uh, lifestyle photography for a company. I was on location. I photographed probably a hundred different people. I was using the Z62 with the 50 mil 1.2. I deliberately installed a new firmware the day before we started, and the results are stunning. I decided, why not? You know, everyone says it's so awesome. Why don't I use face and eye detect? So for probably about half of it, I did, just because sometimes there were so many faces and the system jumped around in a way that I didn't want it to jump around. It was still working. It was still finding eyes and so on. But I'm so used to doing it the old way that I, I did a little bit of mix and match because I could. But what I can say to you is I was walking backwards down a street over grass while people were walking towards me. I'm walking along like this shooting with the 50 mil, with it at like 2.8 or 3.4, something like that. And it was nailing it. That means you're covered for so many scenarios, except for super high speed sports, which I think Fro 
showed us a few months ago, he was actually able to get previous firmware versions to work pretty well for him, even in high speed sports. I think it was basketball or something like that. Are Nick on asleep? Absolutely not. You've got the Z62 and the Z72. These cameras are only three or four months old and they keep being updated and they keep getting better and they work super well and the files, the quality of the files that come out and the quality of the Nikon glass, like I've now got a full suite of lenses. I've got the, the 14 to 24, the 24 to 70, the 70 to 2.8, 2.8s, all of them. I've got a selection of primes, a whole lot of primes. For a guy like me, for the type of work I do, I've actually got everything I need already in the Z system. They're not asleep. I know rumors told us we were gonna hear about things last month, but they were rumors. They were only ever rumors. And we always, we always are very careful to state these are rumors. These are, these are not facts. I've heard another speculation that Nikon are gonna do their annual report. Their annual report's gonna be next week. And then we'll start to hear about things then. Who knows? I don't think they're asleep and I don't think there's anything wrong with the D850, the D5, the D6, the D500 or any other D's F mounts that you have right now. And if you have Z's, if you're thinking about getting a Z, if you're actually a pro, if you're someone when, where photography is something that you invest a lot of money in, if you're a photographer and you buy these 400 and 600 mil primes, then getting yourself a Z62 or even a Z72 really is not a big deal. As a professional, a Z62 is actually just a day. And for some professionals, it's half a day's work. Nikon are not asleep. I don't think there's anything to worry about. Your F mount glass and your F cameras are working great and the Z cameras are working great. And there is already a super suite of lenses for most working professionals. Yes, not all. Not all, you don't have the longer reach, but the two times teleconverter works great. Yes, that video is coming very soon. I am working on the 7200 and the two times teleconverter video, it is coming. It's a massive video because I've collected so much material. But that gives you 400 mil and you can F to Z, your 200 to 500 or F to Z, your 200 to 400 F mount lenses and they work the same, if not better. There is no reason not to be excited. And I do think, I do think that Nikon will have some stuff for us very, very soon. And once it starts to come, I think we'll all be a little bit teary eyed. So don't worry everybody. I don't think they're asleep. There's a lot going on. They've had to, they've had to move office country to country, epic. They've got to move staff around from Japan to Thailand during COVID. That means they have to be quarantined. That's difficult. And they are juggling getting a lot of different things out at once. The Z9, the new Z, what is it, 30, 50, 70? We think it's probably the, an entry level APS-C camera. That's coming and I'm sure it's all being put together and lots of new lenses. I think we may well have a bit of a Christmas in the middle of this year and wouldn't that be fun? All right, everybody. Well, here I am. I'm in the City Gallery. Please, if you happen to be in Melbourne or Australia or in the New Zealand travel bubble, please do come down and visit us here. We would love to see you. If this is your first time here and you like what you've heard, well, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe. Please share this video. Please click on the notification bell and please do like it. It means so much for the channel and it means a lot to me. All right, I'll see you very soon. Whew, lots of videos in the pipeline. They are coming. All right, catch ya.